Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on the disease process. So the disease process is made up of a series of steps, and we're always going to look at these steps. The first of the steps is the manifestation of the disease, and then the care of the patient, followed by the etiology, and then diagnosis, treatment of the disease, and then prognosis. So let's start with number one, which is manifestation, and let's talk about what manifestation means, because it means something very specific when we're talking about disease. So manifestation is how a disease presents or shows itself. It's also sometimes called the clinical presentation. And manifestation is going to include the signs and the symptoms of the disease. And we need to talk about signs and symptoms specifically at this point. We've been kind of lumping them in together and being casual about what they meant, but I actually do want to start being very specific about the difference between signs and symptoms. So signs of a disease are objective, physical observations by a medical professional. And that happens during a physical exam. So you're going to have inspection during the physical exam that's physically looking and, you know, looking for for signs of a disease. Then you're going to have auscultation, and that's when they listen to the body cavities with a stethoscope. Palpation, which is pressing on organs or tissues. Percussion, which is tapping on the body to listen to how different... Um, Different processes in the body are happening. Specifically, you can you can hear certain things in lungs and, and in the GI tract. And then you're going to have olfaction. So some diseases will actually lead to characteristic smells. So during that time, the, the medical professional is actually looking for any abnormal smells or telltale smells. So like, for example, if you are, um, if you are diabetic and um, you are extremely low blood sugar, you'll, you'll, your, your body will give off a very specific smell. The difference between signs and symptoms is that symptoms are actually the patient description of abnormalities and discomforts. So examples of those would be things like pain, nausea, weakness, uh, fatigue, vomiting, things like that. Our second step is going to be care of the patient. So there are three steps within care of the patient, just to make things more complicated. The first is to take the patient history and to determine the symptoms and past medical issues. Um, so that's when you actually write down um, the, the signs and the symptoms that we just talked about. Um, then you're going to have a physical exam of the patient. Um, to, to, to determine any of those signs. After that, you're going to have your lab tests and your radiologic pr procedures. Also, any clinical procedures that aren't blood work tests are going to happen then. So uh, talk to the patient, determine their symptoms, do the physical exam, write down the signs, and then order any um, particular tests that you need beyond the doctor's office. Etiology, we've talked about, um, and that's the cause of the disease. So Sometimes disease causes are unknown, and in those cases, we say that those diseases are idiopathic. Um, and then sometimes diseases are what, what we call iatrogenic. Uh, iatro comes from iatros, which means healer. Genic comes from genus, which is produced. So iatrogenic is a disease that is caused by medical treatment. So there are some treatments that will actually lead to specific um, diseases uh, as a side effect. Uh, but if the side effect is not as bad as the disease that is being treated, then, then the hospital just goes with that. So iatrogenic diseases are um, diseases caused by medical treatment. Uh, etiology, the cause of the disease because we've talked about it a little bit and we're going to have to identify specifically, we're not going to go a ton into etiology, but this is where you identify cause. After that, you're going to go ahead and make your diagnosis. And so that's when you assign a name to a patient's condition. Um, and that's needed to determine the treatment 
and the prognosis of the patient. After diagnosis, we are going to move on to treatment. Um, And the treatments that are prescribed need to always be as precise as possible to cure the disease with the fewest possible side effects. So treatments can include exercise, they can include uh, nutritional modifications, they can include um, physical therapy, medications, sometimes surgery. There are three common types of therapies that are going to be prescribed as part of your treatment. There are three general categories. So the first therapy type is supportive care, supportive therapy. And that's basically going to be rest, fluids, possibly an antibiotic. And that's going to go ahead and just allow the body to heal on its own. The second therapy is called palliative therapy or palliative care. And this is designed to provide relief to the patient but this is not a cure. Uh, it, it's going to normally involve steroids, pain relievers, possibly surgery to remove um, a tumor or something that is causing discomfort for the patient. But palliative care is used in terminal illness. So when we're talking about palliative, palliative therapy, we're not looking to cure the disease. We're not looking to prevent the disease. We're basically just looking to make the patient as comfortable as possible. And the next therapy is preventive um, therapy, which is just used to prevent disease. So uh, routine checkups, exams, uh, screenings. So going and getting a mammogram after the age of 40, if you're a woman, prostate exams for men after the age of 40, getting your blood work done uh, yearly. You guys all go for physicals, now probably because you're young, but once you're out of uh, out of high school, out of college, you'll go through a time period where you probably won't get your preventative exams and your routine screenings. And we've talked about it in class. You kind of have to have a baseline to compare to, so you know what's normal for you. Um, so these these screenings are really important. So you should consider them. Go to the doctor when you're not sick every once in a while. It's good for you. Uh, And then the last step in the disease process is prognosis. Prognosis is the predicted or expected outcome for the patient. And it's often listed as one of three possible outcomes. Good, which means that the patient should make a full recovery. Guarded, which means that a full recovery might not occur. And then poor, which means that the patient is not expected to recover. So those are the end of your notes for module three or module four. So I hope that's helpful.